I'm Hazel, and today we're taking a look at the different editions of Shadowlands that you can get, what comes with each one, how to get what comes with it, and whether or not that whole concept was a good idea. All of the pricing in this video will be in US dollars, you should be able to find local pricing in your in-game shop. So this time around, instead of just a regular and digital deluxe, they're bumping it up to three different versions. I have a theory as to why, which I'll get into shortly. Your first version is the base edition. For 40 US dollars, that just gets you the game. That's $10 cheaper than what they charged for BFA at launch, but you do not get the level boost with this one. If you just want the game and don't want to pay more for extras, this is for you. Getting this or any other version of Shadowlands will unlock Death Knights for allied races and Pandarins as soon as 8.3 goes live. When you step up from that to the Heroic Edition, you are now looking at 60 US dollars. That's 10 bucks more than BFA, and you're pretty much at a full AAA game price now. This one gets you the game and DK unlocks, and then also a 120 boost, a flying mount, and a quest that leads you to a transmog set. The boost can be used right away, or you can sit on it for later. 120 means that you are fully leveled for 8.3 with this, and can jump right back in if you've taken a break. The flying mount is the ensorcelled everworm, and it looks like this. If you ask me, it's very pretty. However, it flies like a cloud serpent, which I personally find tough to look at. My favorite mounts fly in a straight line, and preferably have some legs. The transmog set is the Eternal Traveler's Vestments, and looks like this. You don't actually get the mog set with your pre-order, you just get access to the quest which unlocks it. That's unusual. Completing the quest does take some work, which we'll circle back to and look at in a sec. There is one more Shadowlands edition available, and that's the Epic Edition for 80 US dollars. This is $10 more than the BFA Digital Deluxe was, but there is more included. You get all of the earlier stuff, so the game, DK unlocks, boost, mount, transmog set, and then also a battle pet, a cosmetic hearthstone toy, a weapon enchant illusion, and 30 days of game time. The battle pet is the anima wormling, which looks like this. The moveset and stats won't change your life, but it's kinda cute and matches the mount. The Eternal Traveler's Hearthstone toy is a cosmetic hearthstone and looks like this when you use it. We do have a lot of hearthstone toys these days, but that's pretty neat. It kind of stomps on the holographic one that you craft on Mechagon by doing a similar concept, but just much flashier. The weapon enchant illusion is Wraith Chill, looks like this, and can be mogged onto any weapon that can normally use enchant illusions. That means that bows, crossbows, and guns are out of luck, as are weapons like the Ahun Frost Scythe that have their own built-in effects. For everything else though, you can Wraith Chill it. The color of the whole weapon changes, and you get a nice wind effect on the end too. Of all the pre-order cosmetic things, this one feels the most Shadowlands-y to me. The last thing that you get with this one is a flat 30 days of game time, with of course a $15 value. Assuming that you're going to actually play Shadowlands, you will probably get some use out of that. That is a very easy value to justify. Putting that only into the most expensive edition is a big fat upsell tactic if I've ever seen one. I'll explain. At first, when I saw that they had split it into three editions, I didn't really get why. It just seemed unnecessary and confusing. At a second look though, it's actually kind of brilliant or diabolical depending on how you feel about sales. The cheapest edition seems there to make you feel better about the whole thing. Now they can say that the new expansion is more affordable than ever. If people complain about the high prices of the fancy editions, you can just point them to this one and arguments over. So people look at that and they liked the Shadowlands announcement, so they're sold on getting one of them. The middle one is then pretty easy to justify because it's the price of a standard game and you're also getting a mount which used to be deluxe only, and a transmog set, kinda, and then also a boost which you can use to get back in the game now for 8.3. So once you've sold people on the middle one, then they look at the epic and it's 20 bucks more but has $15 worth of game time built in. At that point, it's only another mental $5 to get the pet and the enchant and the hearthstone and that's how they get you. The existence of the middle one seems like it's basically there just to talk you into the highest one. All of that is my own opinion and conjecture, but hopefully you see where I'm coming from. So let's jump back for a bit to the transmog set and how you actually get it. It's tied to the mount, which you see in the upper two versions of the game. Mount up on the Everworm and you'll see a clickable orb here on the back. Click that and an NPC quest giver will spawn. I recommend that you do this somewhere flat so that the poor guy has somewhere to stand. The outfit that he's in is the same appearance that we're working towards. He'll offer you the quest, the Eternal Traveler, which wants you to collect soul echoes to unlock your set. 
those have a chance to drop from seemingly any mobs in Kul Tiras or Zandalar, including inside dungeons and raids. Higher difficulty bosses have higher drop rates or can drop more at once. The community has noticed a trend where every daily reset, a clump of three to six of these things drops for you pretty early. Within the first five to ten minutes of mob farming every day, I've had a chunk drop for me. It's not on the first loot of the day, but relatively early. Aside from that first chunk, the drop rate is pretty low. You'll only see usually one echo at a time and can go hundreds of mobs without seeing one. What that means is that if you want it in one day, you can do that, but you'll need to really sit down and grind it out over hours. If you're not in a hurry and you're not mythic raiding and you just don't have the kind of stamina to grind, you can just farm for that first clump every day and then put it down until tomorrow. If you go with the slower, just looting your one clump a day strategy, you can expect to finish this in around two weeks. My plan is to grind for as long as it's fun, and to do so in areas that can also drop world mounts, uh, like the Sethrak and Voldoon for that dune scavenger. Farming is more fun if you can double dip. Once you have unlocked the transmog set, you can use it account wide, but you do need to be level 120 plus to wear it. So about that transmog quest. Normally, I'm never really put out by being asked to farm for something. I tend to be even more attached to mounts, pets, and achievements that I've had to really work for. I like those ones more, I use them more, and I appreciate them more. However, this case is just so weird because it is a pre-order bonus? Paying real money for something and then also needing to do an in-game grind is bizarre, and I, I just don't get it. I'm not mad, but I don't understand. If you have theories, please put them in the comments because I am stumped. Uh, one last thing to note on the topic of pre-orders is that there will be a physical collector's edition box of Shadowlands available to buy down the road. They have confirmed that when that comes out, it will include a code for the epic version. If you buy the box and you have already paid for a digital copy, whatever you paid for the original digital game will be applied to your Blizzard account as Blizzard Balance. That cannot be cashed out into real world money, so it's not a true refund, but you can use it to buy digital Blizzard goods from any of their titles. If you buy one version of Shadowlands and want to upgrade to a fancier one later, you can just pay the difference to upgrade and get the extra stuff. Note that if you do that and you then later buy the collector's box, the balance amount that they apply to you will not include the upgrade fee. Weird thing to do, but they've publicly confirmed that, so beware. And those are the different Shadowlands versions. The expansion does not have a release date yet, aside from just sometime in 2020, so you have tons of time to decide if it's for you. Keep an eye on my channel for more WoW videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.